Hi, I'm clearly not Lily, but Lily is allowing me to talk to you about diversity today. My name's Tamara, and I'm an author and a writer, and I wanted to talk to you about writing about your ethnicity and your stories. We all want to represent our own experiences in our writing. We want to tell our stories. It's important. It's one of the reasons that makes writing and reading so interesting because when there's people that have these diverse viewpoints and places and life and things that they're doing and you get to experience little pieces of their world, it's incredible. I'm incredibly biased but hopefully you are too and you love the written word as well. As I said, I'm gonna come to you today and give you so, a few tips that I have learned as I've been writing my current novel, which is a cozy mystery and my main character, Azadora, or Aza, is black. Just to give you a little bit of background, she lives in a very small town in West Virginia where she's definitely a minority minority much like myself was. And please let me know down in the comments what you think because conversation makes all of this fun. I'm gonna give you these tips from my point of view and talking in terms of being black. However, I think that these tips can be applied across different races, nationalities, genders, and sexual orientations, etc. But I'm just coming to you from where I am. So I had this story that I wanted to write. I wanted to write about a cozy mystery with an African-American lead and the first bit of advice that I would give to you that I learned is that I had to be true to myself. I had to be true to my experiences and the story that was playing in my head. I had to write about things as I saw them, as I felt she would feel, things that I thought would be relevant in the situation, things that I thought would happen in a small town with the situations that I was creating. And I had to remember that my story was not going to represent every single black person, every single black person's experience. I can't expect these 75,000 words to represent every black person in West Virginia and Chicago and Nairobi and Australia and London and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That is impossible and to put that much weight on myself in my story would be a disservice but they might find a little bit of themselves there and if not then they might just find something that they think is funny or something that is interesting something that they can relate to something that they can connect with and here's the thing i think that sometimes people do really really want so much to see themselves in a story and they feel upset or cheated because the character didn't do what they expected someone who's black to do or they don't speak the way a black person should speak or should speak or whatever but that's when i had to remind myself that anybody else's opinion is really none of my business i cannot control how people think feel respond and react to my work the only thing i can do is to write it to the best of my ability to try to create an interesting and fun and enjoyable story and to set it out into the universe. It's mine, I created it, and I have to own it. Now, owning it and being tone deaf when people tell you that there is an issue involved in your story that is harmful to people and that you need to look into that when your sensitivity readers or your beta readers are signaling to you hey there's a problem here that's different from owning it that's just being tone deaf i'm not even going to go into that topic i feel like if you have been on i don't know twitter for the past four three years and you've been a part of the YA twitter community that you've you've um, you've come across this what's the but anyway, one aspect of writing about someone being black and imagining that people who weren't black were going to end up reading it was that I wondered how much should I explain? And then I realized, no, 
No, I'm trying to share an authentic kind of vision into this world. Every little piece of minutia is not going to be explained. For instance, there is a part where I talk about her having a wash day and then talk about her baby hairs. In the context of what's written around there, people should be able to figure out what that means if they've never run across these words before. And if they want to know more information, then Google is there to help them. I'm not writing a research paper. I'm not writing a dissertation. This isn't a nonfiction novel about the African American experience. This is just a fiction book about this really cool chick that's doing some bomb stuff. So the thing I needed to keep in mind is the tropes from the genre. Like I said, I am writing a cozy mystery. In a cozy mystery, there's quite a few things to keep into consideration. And let me tell you the stuff that's important for, let's say, the main character. In the average cozy mystery, the main character is a white female who's very intelligent, a little bit nosy, feels invests, personally invested in the murders that occur, and she is not a detective or someone who works in the law industry in a professional capacity. Keeping that into consideration as a she too is all of those things except she's black, she has a hell of an afro, and she's bomb. But <laughs> I kept all of those same characteristics, those same tropes in the story because when someone who loves cozy mysteries comes to read my story. I want them to have that familiarity and to have those things that make a cozy, cozy. Another thing that I was worried about was playing into stereotypes. You know, I know, I know you've had this, I know you've had this before, where you're reading a book and you're into it and it's cool, things are going, and then there's just that one part where the author through in a stereotype and you just kind of cringe like ah why is that there and it's something that clearly the author hadn't thought about at all and it was it's jarring it doesn't help with the story and it takes you out of it for a second and granted I am a person who's sensitive to those and I check for them when I'm reading and it's not even a it's not on purpose thing it's just my brain is like ah why they do that and I notice it and because I'm a person who lives in this society and I consume this media that too is in my head so I wanted to make sure that in this novel that there that's not happening if there is a stereotype I want to be playing with it I want to be turning it on its head I don't want to just be feeding into it one thing I did Everybody knows the stereotype that black people love fried chicken, even though people who eat meat love fried chicken too because it's delicious, but anyway. I decided that even though it might not have been anything that anyone else would notice, it made me uncomfortable. It made me feel like I was feeding into a stereotype. Since I am the first gatekeeper, the first editor, the first person to consume me this media even before I share it, I wanted to feel better about it. So that was something that I deleted. And I would caution you to be aware of any stereotypes that you put in your story and either take them out or address them in some way or take them and flip the hell out of them and just make it that much more interesting for your reader. And of course, remember, this is ultimately your story and your vision and keep true to that. Thank you so much for having me, Lily. And thank you so much, dear viewers, for checking me out. I hope that you enjoyed this. Please go down in the comments and let's have a chit chat. My name is Tamara and I talk about writing and books and I do a weekly write-in on my channel. If you haven't already, please subscribe to Lily. I love her work and I'm so honored that she's allowing me to be here. And if you have the time, go check out my channel. And if you like it there, please click subscribe. Again, thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Bye.